good evening to all it's my pleasure to welcome everyone for the international webinar on the topic trends in electrical engineering organized by department of tripoli new prints shri bhavani college of engineering and technology chennai i sincerely thank the management our director sir and principal sir for creating us a wonderful platform to conduct these types of webinar in our college for today's interesting session we have a special invitee mr vinukumar lukos senior lecturer department of electrical engineering scgi university malaysia i extend a very warm welcome to mr vinukumar who has accepted our invitation to address the gathering amongst his busy schedule i would also like to welcome all the heads of the department and faculty members of various departments for this webinar last but not the least i would like to welcome all our participants who have joined this webinar before going to the session i like to introduce our guest of the day he is currently working as a senior lecturer in the department of electrical engineering under the faculty of engineering and built environment in scgi university malaysia he had 15 years of teaching experience in various universities in malaysia and engineering colleges in india he taught various modules under electrical and electronics engineering discipline and taught modules under the university of east london uk his research interest in the field of power electronics and published numerous papers in journals and attended various conferences he is a member of various professional bodies such as member of ieee institution of engineers malaysia iem board of engineers malaysia bem and the member of associate asian engineering technologists now i hand over the session to our speaker you can proceed sir okay Thank you, Miss uh, Sanshia. Uh, thank you for welcoming me. Uh, I'm very happy. Uh, thank, uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity for this webinar on uh, Industry Four and Zero Trends in Electrical Engineering. This is the overview of my today topic. I'm going to talk in few uh, topics: Industry Revolution 4.0, uh, Smart Grid. energy efficient lighting technology wireless power transfer wireless wearable tech electrical vehicle sustainable energy with artificial intelligence now everywhere the people are talking about industrial revolution 4.0 what is the meaning of the industrial revolution 4.0 the meaning of the industrial revolution 4.0 is the ongoing transformation of traditional manufacturing and industrial practices combining with the latest smart technology so now everyone is talking about the latest uh, the smart technology uh, uh, from few years if you look into that uh, everyone is using the mobile phone is easy to convert or easy to uh, uh, do anything nowadays so industrial revolution 4.0 is a ongoing transformation from the traditional manufacturing to the new industrial practices so this uh, primarily focuses on the use of machine to machine communication the internet of things is not only a uh, machine to internet of things or the paper is a machine to machine communication and the internet of things and so what is the purpose of uh, this is it will increase the automation We improve the communication, and it can be self-monitoring, meaning that uh, the, the person or the man not, not necessary to control the machine itself. It can be controlled with the smart technology. So this is the industrial revolution 4.0. Uh, 
So let me introduce uh, what is the meaning of industrial revolutions 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. Sometimes uh, we are asking about the question, what is the meaning of the industrial revolutions 1.0? Let me explain with the help of this picture. So you, I think uh, this picture is more clear for you. Industrial revolution 1.0 was introduced in 1760 and uh, uh, 1820. Time uh, the introduction of the steam and uh, water power. So in the uh, revolution 1.0 is the introduction of the steam and water power, and the uh, industrial 2.0 is the introduction of a uh, mass production of assembly line using electrical power. So that uh, industrial uh, 2.0 known as technological re revolution. Industrial 3.0 can be called as digital revolution. So that time is the automated production uh, using electronics, uh, programmable logic controller, IT system, and uh, robotics. Meaning that in Revolution 3.0 itself, most of these things are automatically controlled. But now we are in uh, Industry 4.0. So Industry 4.0 was introduced in uh, 2011 uh, by German. Uh, German. Uh, we call it as a smart factory or autonomous factory, making decision uh, through the big data and uh, machine learning with the help of uh, various technology. So this is the overview of the industrial revolution. Uh, industrial revolution 2.0 and 4.0. So now everyone is moving in the industrial revolution 4.0. Okay. Now, this industrial revolution 4.0 impact in uh, many of the uh, technology, uh, technologies. Uh, let me uh, explain what are the uh, few uh, important technologies is impact to this industrial revolution 4.0. Uh, here, you can see here, robotics, artificial intelligence. Everyone is talking about the AI, nanotechnology, the quantum computing, biotechnology, internet of things and uh, 5G will be there, and the 3D printing, fully autonomous electric vehicle. So many technologies are there. It's, uh, not limited only this, but there are so many uh, technologies are emerging with the, with the industrial revolution 4.0. Okay, now, this picture showing the nine pillars of industrial revolution 4.0. So the industrial revolution 4.0 covering this area you may know some of the area here it is uh, Internet of Things, multi-agent system, system integration, simulation, big data analytics, cyber security, cloud computing, additive manufacturing. But we are not going to study or we are not going to talk today about all the things. We are going to discuss only a few. Uh, what is uh, the main thing in the electrical engineering? Okay, now we look at this uh, here. We are going to discuss, uh, we are going to, I'm going to talk uh, only a few examples. I'm going to uh, talk about a few examples. What is the, uh, what are the revolution? What are, because of industrial uh, 4.0, what has happened with the, some of the uh, electrical engineering field? So uh, my, my topic uh, today, I'll uh, stick on this. Uh, I will explain a little bit on the smart grid, energy efficient lighting technologies, wireless power transfer, wireless wearable tech, electrical vehicle, sustainable energy. So there are a lot of technologies are there in electrical engineering itself, but I'm not going to talk all. It will take long time to uh, complete that. So now I'm going to talk with a, a smart grid. Everyone know about the grid. It's so, so very important. Uh, uh, for the uh, transmission line or what does it mean? Let me start with the grid. Grid is a network of transmission line that deliver electricity from power plant to the public. In India, there are many uh, transmission grid are there. Or in India, we have many power plants are there. According to the statistics, the total installed capacity until March 31st, 2020, the total installed capacity in India, the total power plant installed capacity is 370 gigawatts. So it's a huge amount. 
with a, a very big amount. So here is the grid. Oh, it is a network yeah. that will transmit the electrical power from the power plant to the uh, consumer end. We are the consumer. Maybe uh, the industrial people are the consumer. Maybe the apartment, uh, those who are staying in the apartment, they are the consumers. So they need the power. The power will come from the power plant. In India, there are different power plants are there. Uh, they have the hydroelectric power plant, nuclear electric power plant. There are different types of re uh, renewable energy source uh, power plant. Now. There are so many power plants out there. According to the statics, I would like to uh, mention a few things here. Um, in a transmission line, most of you are uh, electrical background. You know about uh, in a power system, we have mainly the generator. Uh, we have the transmitter, uh, transmission, and the distribution line. I would like to highlight about one information here. Uh, meaning, uh, there are different voltage levels are there in the transmission line. It can be 765 kilovolts, it can be 400 kilovolts, or it can be 22 kilovolt transmission line. Let me explain uh, one level of voltage, like uh, 765 kilovolt transmission line is uh, length of the transmission line is 36,000. 673 kilometer. This is only the information from 765 kilovolt transmission network. I'm not talking all, I'm just mentioning you the transmission line length in a grid in India is 36,673 kilometers. So uh, uh, the network is uh, huge. There are many networks are there in the uh, in India. So why we need uh, the smart grid? Okay, previously they used uh, uh, the normal one, but now we are going to, because of the industrial revolution 4.0, we are going to discuss about the uh, smart grid. Smart grid is a new technology that will deal with the digital automation, computer and control, which make two-way communication with, uh, between the power provider and the load consumer. Our provider is the electricity board or the one who is providing the electrical power. So this, because of the smart grid or the implementation of the smart grid, we can have two-way communications. Instead of one-way communication, we can have two-way communications. So here, with the help of smart grid, smart grid, we can connect everything. We can connect all the power plant together. We can connect all the customers like uh, the uh, buildings, we can connect all the industrial uh, plants, we can connect the electrical vehicles, we can connect with the help of the smart grid. So there are so many advantages are with the smart grid. So um, nowadays, if, uh, if there is any power cut in our India, for example, uh, so it will, maybe, maybe it will take time for the person come and check uh, the problem but, with, uh, but because, uh, with this help with the help of the smart grid uh, everything will be in a digital uh, information meaning that whatever the problems happen or happening or before happening the problem uh, with the help of the smart grid uh, we can rectify sometime or we can uh, do it immediately no need to wait for half day or one day for solving the problem with the help of the smart grid, um, the service provider can get the information. What is the uh, particular problem in the particular area or what is the problem in the particular substation or what is the problem in the particular industry with the help of this smart grid. So let me explain uh, what are the uh, few advantages or the benefits of smart grid. So it will decrease the uh, blackout and it will, sometime it will uh, lower the energy cost. Now uh, the price is little high in India per unit of energy, if you know that. But uh, with the implementation of the smart grid, uh, the energy cost can be uh, reduced. Facilities, real-time troubleshooting, I already mentioned that. Anything happened before, uh, it will take time to troubleshoot, but with the help of the smart grid, 
easily can be troubleshoot the problem. Reduces expenses to energy producers, uh, improve flow control, detect malfunction. There are many uh, theft happening in uh, many places. Uh, electrical, they are stealing the electrical energy without the uh, without notifying the or uh, without the information uh, without the information about the or uh, without notifying the uh, electrical service provider. There are a lot of uh, things happening. So this can be avoided with the help of the smart grid. And uh, not only that, uh, there is a communication from the uh, between the power plant to the uh, customer or uh, the users. Okay. So the first one is about the uh, smart grid. Okay, now I'm, I would like to talk about the energy efficient lighting. So uh, now everywhere, a few years back, everyone uh, used the incandescent light or the fluorescent light in the house. But now things have changed. Everyone is uh, using the LED lighting. There are a uh, lot of good things are there. So now the technology, because of the technology, with the help of the uh, LED light, we can reduce the energy consumption. And not only that, the same LED light can be used as a smart bulb. This is the uh, very good thing in the uh, LED technology. So that can, the smart bulb or the LED light can control. Okay, for example, if you are to control uh, the lighting system in our house, or if you want to control anything in our house, the help of the uh, LED bulb, we can control. Meaning that we can have some control uh, sensor, or control equipment, or control things in the bulb and control switch off the equipment or anything. For example, now uh, there are many places uh, in many buildings that are automatic uh, uh, lighting system, like our automatic power system is there. Uh, meaning that if suppose uh, if we build or if you have that kind of system in our house, sometime if you, uh, when we forget to turn off the light or equipment in our house, we can control uh, with the help of the mobile phone or any any other things. So uh, this uh, this can be used. And now uh, with the help of or with the use of LED uh, by 2027. We can save about 348 terawatt hour electricity. So this is a huge impact because of the LED. We can save around the globally. I'm talking about this globally. We can save around 348 terawatt hour electricity energy by 2027. Okay. Now it's not only the LED can be used for the lighting purpose. LED also can be used. So here you look at the title is LIFI, light fidelity. So uh, we know that LED light can be used only for the lighting purpose or can be used only for some uh, control purposes. But now the research is going on and uh, already uh, in a market in a few places can be used as a wireless data network. In our house, we are using the Wi-Fi network. And we know the speed. I'm using the Wi-Fi network in, um, in my house. Uh, the speed is very low, around uh, maybe 100 megabytes per second. But with the help of this uh, LED light, uh, we can use the LED light as a uh, Wi-Fi. So we call it as a light fidelity. Okay, the speed is, the engineers claim that the speed of the LIFI uh, could reach that of 100 times what is available on a Wi-Fi network. It's very high, the speed is very high. And uh, uh, theoretically, the research is saying that it can speed up to 20 gigabyte per second with the help of the LED light. So this is the lighting technologies in the uh, electrical engineering. Okay, now I'm moving to the next one. Okay, sorry. Uh, there are so many advantages using this uh, LED uh, lighting or the LED, uh, light, uh, light LI Wi Fi faster than the traditional network access, no electromagnetic interferences, very precise GPS capabilities, eco friendly. There are a few things you can see here. Okay, 
Now the next topic is I would like to uh, explain about wireless power transfer. Very interesting field. Uh, why wireless uh, power transfer? A few years back, when I was working in another university, my student, I, I think around eight years back, one of my friend, he's from Nigeria, uh, he asked me, can I do uh, the project on wireless power transfer? Uh, I was shocked because I was not very familiar with that, but a student asked me, can I do uh, the wireless power transfer uh, project? I said, yes. So he did that, and uh, when I see that, that time eight years back, uh, he, he can transfer the electrical power within five centimeter, meaning that there are two sections in the wireless power transfer. One is the uh, uh, primary segment, and another one is a, a secondary uh, segment or a secondary site. So he can uh, he could uh, transfer the electrical power from the primary site to secondary site within a five centimeter. But the distance is short. But nowadays, you know that, that because of the technology uh, improvement, you can see uh, some of the students in my uh, college, they are using the wireless power uh, technology or transfer to charge the mobile. So uh, the technology is improving now. So what research is saying that in 2020, we expect better wireless charging for smartphone your phone and uh, other smart devices that are there is, is existing and uh, the research is going there. And uh, wireless charging will also become the standard for car. Okay, now electrical vehicle is very important nowadays. I will talk later about the electrical vehicle. Using this wireless power transfer, you can charge the electrical car without connecting any cable. Okay, the researchers predict that if a few years from now, it will be possible to charge your electrical vehicle while it's moving. So this is about the electrical power transfer. So let me explain a little uh, more on that. There are two types of electrical power transfer. Okay, one is by electromagnetic induction and the other one is by electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic induction means it can be uh, distance, it can't be more than five centimeter, but by electromagnetic radiation, the distance can be a few meters. So you can see this picture, uh, how uh, the mobile phone can be charged with the help of the wireless power transfer. Okay, now you can see the model here. At the back of the phone, you can see there is a coil uh, placed. Okay, this is the receiver coil. And uh, in the previous slide, I've shown that uh, at the base, that is the uh, transmitter coil. So here are some of the information. You can read that. What is the level of the power and the voltage and the frequency level based on the two standards that I mentioned here. Okay, now, so very interesting uh, technology. The next one is a wireless wearable. We know that every people nowadays using the a watch in their hand, uh, maybe for uh, checking their, uh, when they walk, they can check how, how long they walk, or some watches are for health purposes, so uh, it can uh, uh, notify uh, the heartbeat or the health uh, information in the watch. But nowadays, there is a new technology we call it the wearable tech. There's one company, they make proxy bracelets for electrical engineers. This is especially for the electrical engineers with a sensor that vibrate if it gets close to the high voltage electricity. So if suppose any person is near to the high voltage, then the watch will vibrate. Not only uh, uh, vibrate, so the information that can go to the supervisor of the power, for example, the person is working in the power plant. So the information can go to the supervisor or the industry manager. He can get to his mobile phone or to his computer. That particular person is near to the uh, high voltage uh, terminals or the particular person who is wearing the watch can understand or he can identify that I am near to the danger zone. So he can escape from the uh, high voltage uh, terminals. 
So this is about the wireless wearable tech. And also the same wireless wearable tech can also be used to access some electrical machinery or can be accessed to uh, some of the things. So this is about the wireless wearable tech that can be connected to the cloud or the information can be shared to anyone. So this is the uh, technology. Now moving to the next one. It's about electrical vehicle. Very interesting topic is electrical vehicle. Yes. According to the CNBC, the consumer news and the business channel, an international agency, number of vehicles on the road will hit 125 million. It's a huge amount because you know the petrol price and the diesel price everywhere, especially in our place uh, in, in India, the petrol price is very high. And uh, but here I'm staying um, in Malaysia uh, quite long, but the petrol price is quite uh, okay. Uh, it's uh, very cheap. But in other country, maybe uh, the there is uh, when there is whether there is there is no oil or there's no petrol, the prices will be very high. So according to the uh, statistics, uh, in 2000 by 2030, the number of vehicles on the road will be 125 million. It's a huge amount. Okay, let me explain or let me. Uh, show some model or the electric vehicle model by 2020. These are some electric vehicle model released by uh, this year, Tesla Model Y, Volkswagen ID.3, etc. These are some models, I'm just showing that. Okay, now you can see this uh, here, by 2030, how many people, how many percentage of people will use the electric vehicle, okay? The first place is the China, they're going to use the people, 70 percentage of the people going to use electrical vehicle. What about in India? 29 percentage of the people going to use electrical vehicle. So this is the information, so meaning that by 2030, many people's going to use electrical vehicle. And now let me uh, say some uh, technologies behind the electrical vehicle because uh, according to the statistics, you know that around uh, uh, 125 million is going to be uh, 125 million is a huge uh, numbers. So well, I would like to uh, explain uh, some technologies behind the uh, electrical vehicles. So the first one is the battery technology. So battery is very important, right? We are using the mobile phone, we are using the laptop, Everything, most of the equipment need the battery. Uh, uh, in the earlier, early year, uh, most of the people, they use uh, different types of uh, batteries, nickel cadmium batteries they used uh, in 1990s. But when lithium ion batteries emerge in the market, they quickly become the, uh, the lithium ion batteries, the uh, dominant model in the market. So some people are saying that the lithium Iron battery is ideal battery. We know the meaning of the ideal. Ideal means there is no loss. Some people are saying that is a lithium ion battery is the ideal battery, but it's not possible. It can be uh, long, maybe for three years or four years. Uh, I think based on my understanding that. So in an electric vehicle, uh, the battery is very important. So the battery will come in a cell then they will make it as a module, then they will make it as a pack. You know, the cell that we are using in our uh, remote control that we are using a small cell, uh, each cell uh, in a lithium ion battery around uh, uh, 3.6 volt, that will be packed in a, a huge amount. There are uh, different models using uh, different numbers of cells in the uh, electric vehicles. Okay, look, look at here, uh, this picture, uh, you can see how they arranged the batteries in the car. Uh, let me explain one model here. Tesla Roadster has 6,831 cell, cells in the uh, car they're using. That will provide six, 60 kilowatt hour. So in another model, model yes, 
you can uh, see in the last one, 7,104 cells are used in the electric car. A huge number of cells. Okay, you know the small cell, right? Uh, the many number of cells are used. Okay, so uh, this is the model. You can see the picture in the downside. So here, how they arranged the cell. This is the arrangement of the cells. Uh, they make it as, uh, as a pack. Okay, this is about the battery technology. Okay, sorry. Uh, now, uh, you, you may uh, have about, uh, uh, there are so many accidents. Uh, so just recent year, uh, we cannot carry the lithium ion battery in the flight. So when we travel uh, in the airport, they will ask, Do, are you carrying the uh, lithium ion battery or are you carrying the battery? Uh, if we say yes, we, then we cannot keep it in the bag. So we have to keep it in our, uh, with, with us, we cannot keep it in our luggage bag. So here, uh, the researchers have built non-flammable lithium ion battery with a polymeric electrolyte. So no need to worry about the um, uh, flammable, you don't need to worry about anything. So now there is no uh, worry. Okay, now the technology is developing to make micro hybrid battery with 48 volt. So the model can be expected to release by 2020. Okay, so we discussed about the battery technology. It's not only the battery technologies so in the electrical vehicle, we need the uh, charging technology. So let me explain. Uh, basically, there are two types of electric vehicle. One is a hybrid vehicle. The second one is the plug-in hybrid vehicle. I hope you know that difference between the hybrid vehicle and the plug-in hybrid vehicle. Hybrid vehicle uses engine and the uh, battery. So both will work together. So meaning that when the battery is done, the engine will help the car to move. But in a uh, hybrid vehicle, the system works differently. Meaning that first the battery will uh, work to move the car. Once the battery is down, then the engine can run. But there's no relation between the engine and the, the motor, uh, the uh, battery. So the battery down means we need to charge it. So let me talk about the charging technology. What are the different charging technologies nowadays that people are using? Okay, basically we have two types of charging uh, methods. So one we call this alternating current or we call this on-board charger. The second one is called off-board charger or we call this fast charging. What is the difference between the off-board charger and on-board charger? In on-board charger, we need to connect the charger with the AC supply. Then uh, AC supply will be converted into DC inside the on-board charger as seen here in the car. But if you use the DC fast charging, we no need to use AC to DC converter, but we need the, we can directly connect the charging terminal the, to the battery. So this is the, these are the two different uh, charging methods nowadays used. Okay, now in a, a everywhere, uh, it's like a petrol station, every, uh, not, uh, uh, maybe in the US or Canada, most of the countries, they have the system uh, for charging our car. Like how we are uh, putting the petrol uh, in our car. So they have the charging station. So here we have a different solution for the uh, charging. Okay, if we are in the house or in the office, we can use the AC wall box. If we are in the public, place we can use the AC charging post. If we are in the office or in the commercial place, we can use a convenient uh, charger. If you are in the highway, we can use a fast charger. So now uh, we can charge. If we are using the fast charger, we can uh, charge within 15 to 20 minutes or 30 minutes or maximum maybe two hours. It depends on the capacity of the vehicle. Okay, now, 
uh, in the uh, UK, uh, the system that has uh, comes that meaning using the electric post. Very interesting thing, using the electric post, meaning that they are using the electric post for charging the electric car. So they named us Electric Avenue W9. So using the smart technology, we are studying about the, we are talking about the smart technology, right? So meaning that uh, with the help of our mobile phone, uh, we can find where is the location for charging my car. So yeah, when you search in a uh, Play Store in your mobile, you can see or you can find the location, where is the location for the charging station and what is the capacity or where whether I can use that charging station or not. You can check with the help of our mobile phone. That's, that's a, that is the technology revolution in IR4. We can see everything. Okay, so we can pay with the help of our mobile phone to pay the cash you see here the person is uh, charging the car directly like uh, pumping the petrol in the car just taking the cable and connecting the car using the smart socket technology the smart socket technology is inbuilt with uh, many things you can uh, transfer many informations uh, where is the location or a uh, lot, lot of things you can see with the help of your mobile phone so this is the uh, electric avenue W9. Okay, now uh, let me explain about hydrogen fuel cells because uh, there are a lot of questions, which is the important one, whether is the uh, electric vehicle, the battery or the hydrogen fuel cells. So we know about the hydrogen fuel cells, hydrogen fuel cells that will produce uh, electric uh, energy with the help of the hydrogen when it combined with the hydrogen and oxygen that will produce the electrical power and it will produce water as a waste we know that hydrogen fuel cells and uh, this hydrogen fuel cell is a very good one but there are a few advantages and disadvantages let, let me compare let me show you the comparison between the hydrogen fuel, hydrogen fuel cell and the uh, electric uh, car let me show that Okay, you can see here, what is the difference between the uh, hydrogen fuel cell and the electric vehicles. Hydrogen fuel cell, the cost is higher than lithium ion. Fueling stations are more expensive to install. But very easy to uh, fill up. Lack of hydrogen infrastructure, there are very less. Hydrogen fuel cells once once to 300 miles. It's quite difficult to get the hydrogen fuel station. And uh, until 2019, uh, the overall uh, total installed hydrogen fuel st station overall in the world is 432. But you look at this electric vehicles, low cost, not much expensive. But the problem is charging time is long compared to the hydrogen fuel cell. Electric vehicle can uh, go up to 100 to 100 to 200 miles when we charge one time. Uh, in 2013, according to the statics, statics the number is uh, the electric vehicle number is uh, 5,209. Uh, sorry, 5,900. But in um, now it's going to be rich two lakhs by 2020 the number of electric vehicle is reaching to two lakhs this is the comparison between the hydrogen fuel cell and the electric vehicle okay now the interesting topic is the solar powered car everywhere uh, now the people are using the renewable energy sources and the people are talking about the solar cell Solar panel or solar cell is very uh, uh, important nowadays for the um, generation of electricity. Uh, let me explain about the solar powered car. So the solar powered car can be charged like a plug-in electric vehicle. It will support up to 60 kilowatt of fast charging. And once we charge, it can go up to 507 kilometer range per hour. 
and uh, uh, at the time of starting when we start uh, the car we can go up to 0 to 100 km per uh, kilometer hour in 10 seconds with the help of this uh, electric car the, the one company light year one they are manufacturing that uh, the model are already released but still there is a disk going maybe they will release uh, maybe soon okay okay now uh, the next one is electric uh, plane airplanes uh, we are now we are traveling in an airplane we are using uh, using the uh, white petrol but now the technology because of the technology uh, they are going they are making the electric plan uh, airplane with the um, solar cell or here an electric aircraft is an aircraft powered by electric motor um, it can be support or electricity can be uh, from that there can be used electricity from the battery or it can be from the ground power cable or the electric uh, aeroplane uh, the power can be taken from the uh, ultra capacitors or fuel cell so this is about the electric uh, aeroplane and uh, one of the company israeli fam aviation not aviation they are uh, uh, already uh, the model is out, come out and the uh, the first uh, they can carry nine percenters uh, to thousand kilometers. They can uh, fly to a thousand kilometers, and it is expected to release in two thousand and two. But now the research is going. Maybe uh, by two thousand another twenty years, maybe uh, the uh, most of the aeroplane will be by uh, electric one. Okay, this is my last topic sustainable energy uh, everyone know about the sustainable energy what is the meaning of sustainable energy sustainable energy is a form of energy that meet today's demand of energy without putting the danger of getting expired or depleted and we can use over and over again so it is widely available the sustainable energy is widely available so what are the sustainable energy we call this the renewable energy sources that can be solar that can be geothermal that can be hydropower that can be ocean energy these are the sustainable energy so with the help of the artificial intelligence we are talking about the industry revolution 4.0 with the help of the artificial intelligence we can uh, do so many things meaning that um, we can uh, monitor uh, the um, uh, climate changes uh, when we use maybe the solar panels uh, we can uh, predict the load uh, shedding or uh, if the load is high in the power plant maybe the solar panel can support that time so uh, we can predict the information with the help of or we can get the information most of the information with the help of the artificial intelligence uh, so nowadays the technology is moving to uh, uh, give the importance to this one. Uh, so everything kind going to be smarter. You know that the smarter uh, uh, smart uh, home uh, going to be uh, comes maybe in a few years uh, with the solar installed uh, by installing the solar panels and uh, uh, with the help of the artificial intelligence, every, everything can be smarter. And uh, not only that. A smart battery can be uh, produced the, with the help of artificial intelligence inverters can be smarter everything will be in a smarter way okay now this is the uh, last one uh, let, let me explain a little bit on the uh, solar panels uh, we know what type of solar panels previously used is the uh, uh, Unifacial, unifacial sonar solar panel was used. Nowadays, the technology, because of the technology, mostly they are using the bifacial, bifacial solar panel. You can see this graph here. Uh, the development within 10 years, how many uh, 
solar panels are how many uh, capacity of uh, the installed capacity they are using now so you can look at the graphs okay now the bifacial solar panel is a double sided energy factory that transforms sunlight into electrical energy meaning that using this bifacial solar panel we can use both side of the panel not only the single side we can use the both side of the panel okay so this is some explanation about the uh, bifacial solar panel okay so this is my uh, uh, talk today on uh, industry revolution 4.0 uh trends in electrical engineering so we discussed a few things one is the smart grid uh, we discussed about the wearable tech or wearable watch we discussed about uh the um uh sorry the electric vehicle uh, we discussed about the battery technologies and uh, we discussed about the electrical airplane so many things we discussed so now we know that everything going to be controlled in a smarter way uh, in features so you can see the changes in a features so thank you so much for uh, listening this talk and uh, uh, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, for the sri shivani uh, engineering college um, that's all about my talk today thank you so much thank you sir for your informative speech on the various trends in electrical engineering now there are some questions in the chat box first are electric cars and zero emission vehicle the same thing yes zero emission electric car electric car and uh, hydrogen fuel cell is the uh, sorry uh, electric uh, car is a zero emission yes okay. no emission next question uh, can we monitor the power transfer efficiency meaning that uh, uh, wireless power transfer right ah yes uh, is possible because uh, the power transfer efficiency is the uh, output power by input power right so we can monitor uh, if we can monitor the uh, the level of the output power and uh, input power we can definitely monitor the efficiency yes, can possible uh, next question uh, what will be the future of oil and gas sector considering current scenarios and its impact on electrical engineers in aspect of their current job or future opportunities actually the uh, according to the uh, uh, you know uh, oil and uh, can you repeat the question let me uh, get uh, the question uh, okay sir now uh, what will be the future of oil and gas sector considering okay. current scenarios and its impact on electrical engineers in aspect of their current job or future opportunities actually uh, many research that they are saying that the production of oil and the gas can be uh, slowly down because uh, you know it's like uh, our place uh, the the level of the water is going down in the same way uh, the level of the, this kind of oil and that can be down and uh, the opportunity for the uh, electrical engineers is i'll be mentioned in the smart grid you know i just explain the uh, Uh, how many kilometers of uh, transmission network uh, in india we have so in the future there is a possibility for the electrical engineers to work on that so there are many people necessary for doing the work in a smart way in the electric field even though definitely the uh, gas uh, and the oil can be a, uh, it, it won't be a problem maybe but uh, with the help of the electrical uh, Uh, technology we can uh, uh, use it okay sir uh, next question how fast is wireless charging compared to plug in charging okay uh, this is depends on the uh, distance if the distance is uh, 
longer, uh, torsion will be lesser. If the distance is shorter between the primary and the secondary coil or the secondary uh, platform, or between the uh, primary and secondary platform, or we call it as a primary section and the secondary section. If the distance is more, uh, the charging level will be uh, reduced. If the distance is shorter, the charging will be uh, charging level will be higher. The last question: uh, yes. What is the main reason for using the high voltage for long distance power transmission? Okay, the reason for uh, using the high voltage is uh, reducing the losses. For example, uh, if we don't use, uh, for example, uh, we, uh, uh, most of the power plant is generating uh, 11 kV or 33 kV or 22 kV. Once the power is generated in the power plant, we need to uh, immediately, we need to uh, increase the level of the voltage in the power plant itself at the high level or maybe uh, 720 kilo volts. So why we are increasing the, uh, le uh, the voltage at the power plant itself means we need to, when we transmit the electrical power at long dis distance, uh, the power loss will be increased. So if we didn't increase the high voltage, we cannot send the power. For example, if you are generating 11 kV at the power plant, without increasing this 11 kV to high level, it reach the reach to the customer place it can be uh, only you will get maybe around the uh, 7 kilovolts or maybe around 6 kilovolts so it's not uh, it's not we can't use that 7 kilovolt for our application meaning that i'm telling about this distribution end so we must increase the level of the voltage then only uh, uh, when we when it comes to the uh, customer end or the consumer end we will get back what we generated at the uh, power plant, meaning that we must we must increase the voltage to reduce the power loss. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Now I invite Mrs. Devi, Associate Professor, Tripoli Department, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening to all. It's my privilege and honor to propose my vote of thanks on this special evening. First and foremost, I would like to thank our resource person, Mr. Vinukumar Lukos, Senior Lecturer, ACGI University, Malaysia, for accepting our invitation in his busy schedule and sharing his knowledge with us. His informative speech on the trends in electrical engineering was interesting and definitely it gave a deep insight of the topic. Next, I express our sincere thanks to our respected Chairman Sir and Vice Chairman Sir for providing an opportunity to organize <coughs> such an event. I would like to extend my thanks to our director, sir, and principal, sir, for motivating and supporting for conducting such an event. I wish to express my sincere thanks to our HOD, sir, for his guidance and support. This event wouldn't be successful without our department faculties. Thank you all for your efforts and making this event a grand success. Last but not the least, I thank all other department HODs, faculty members, students, and participants from other colleges for paying your valuable attention and making this event a successful one. Thank you all for the blessing with your presence. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request the participants to turn on your video for the photo session. Sir, you can uh, stop the presentation. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay. Participants, please turn on your videos for the photo session. Yeah. 
Essential man. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Hachodi, sir, can we end the session, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your valuable question. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.